just allow me, good morning, just allow me to uh, share something very short before the reflection of or the homily of Father Roberto. In the gospel reading this morning, once again, our Lord Jesus Christ has shown his mighty power over demons and unclean spirits. And it's a reminder to us that in whatever things that we are facing in our lives day to day, that we know that God never loses sight of what's happening to each one of us in our daily struggles, in facing up to challenges. And may we be reminded also that as we go through the highs and lows of life, especially at times to the lowest ebb of our lives, that the more, uh, instead of focusing on that, that may we continue being a blessing to others and touching the lives of others in the process that we would realize that healing is coming upon us and we can feel the strength of the Lord in us. Remember that God has really uh, left that power, that planted that power in us to be able to, for us to be, it's a, something for us to be able to cope with ourselves and realize that God is really indeed working in each one of us. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Deacon Art. Truly, God is so good in how He continues to work and move. Before we even started, I felt Deacon Art said he had a word. And I did not understand, oh, know exactly what he would share, but it just runs consistent especially now that we are on day minus three to our diocesan meeting on Sunday. And I pray that there is excitement in the air, not so much because of the emotions and the things that are going to happen, the meeting of friends and fellowshipping, because those are great things on Sunday. But there is a higher and greater thing that God is doing. And it is important that we understand, especially the messages that were given in the past days here from the pulpit and from the Eucharistic celebrations, that God is preparing us for great things. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, He always leads us to triumph. Remember that. He is the one leading, not us. There is always the human tendency to trust in our own efforts or to trust in the efforts of man, to trust in the efforts of the world. I think this was one of Saul's greatest problems. He was wanting to obtain victory at his own price. He were, they were oppressed by the Philistines but he wanted to do it his own way. Contrast that with Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. If you remember, Abraham was dead and there was famine in the land. And Isaac perhaps was mulling and musing about going to Egypt. And the word of the Lord said, don't go to Egypt. Even though there maybe have been provisions there, don't go to Egypt. And this is something very important in our Christianity. Do you want victory in your life? Do you want to always be walking in the heights of the things of God? Well, we must understand victory only comes through Christ. It is our trust in Him. We always judge victory by our external things. Yun ang nakasanayan natin. Tingnan natin yun ang paligid, nararamdaman ko, pag okay, victorious ako. Pag hindi okay, well, may problema. But that's not how the kingdom of God operates. The kingdom of God operates always according to the plan of the king, not the plan of the subjects. And the plan of the king is ultimate victory. But in that victory, 
He always leads us to situations that will proclaim that victory and understand like what the apostles understood when they were in Jerusalem and there was this dispute. They realized that we are saved only by the grace of God. Only by God's grace, nothing else. And this is what Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14 says. It's a familiar verse on Christmas Day when he says that the grace of God appears to all men, bringing salvation, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age, waiting for the appearing of the Son of God. It is God's grace. And God's grace only comes when we continue to allow Him to lead us, when we continue to bow before Him. Here in our reading today, it is a series of events in the life of Jesus in the Gospel, which began in chapter 1. And if you recall in chapter 1, Jesus begins His ministry in Galilee with this, this event. He says, early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. This begins the series of events that led Jesus to times of pleasantness, to times of tribulations, to times of difficulty, through the storms. Binabagyo ba ang ating buhay? God many times leads us not to the storm, but to the victory through the storm. Remember yesterday in Acts chapter 14? It is with tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. And here Jesus finds himself in a place that is Gentile country. And you can read the, the, the comments that we're there about this place. We call it Decapolis here in the gospel. It is a place of Gentile country. From a place of Jewish country, his hometown, place where to a Jew it was the clean place. Now this is in Gentile country. The Gentile country is a country of uncleanness. It is the country of conflict. It is the country where Jews would not want to dirty themselves. You know, in April of 2004, lived, having lived in an exclusive village, high middle class village for many years, where it was nice, the neighborhood was clean, always there was no problem, security guards always roaming, there was an association. The Lord moved me and I can say that because I can remember sharing this with Deacon Ed Canlas, and he confirmed it and he said, that's the word of the Lord. We moved me to the place where I am living today. It's called Barangay Paltok, place of informal settlers, a place where people will always knock and have, nasunugan po kami dito sa tatalon. People would always bother you, you would always hear the, the name, Father! And they would barge the gate. And a place where, in other words, it's not nice from the eyesight. So when we moved there, in one or few days, we lost several items agad. Ninakawang kami. Our washing machine was literally carried over the fence. About a year later, when my mother was still alive, she was living in my brother's house. We were, a robber came in and took all her jewelry. Nice place, right? From a plush neighborhood where you can leave the door open overnight and you would be assured nothing will happen. To a place where we would say, wow, this is unclean. But beautiful God that He is, He transforms now that place little by little. Because our calling is not to live in always clean surroundings. Our calling is not to live in ideal places. Ang sarap talaga, nang walang problema. But our calling is to transform the darkness into light. 
and to change the situation by the power of the Spirit and by the grace of God to confront the demonic forces. If you remember one chapter from now, Mark 6, he sends out the disciples. He says to them, the first word he says to them, cast out demons. He gave them authority. The first command, he said, with this authority, you are to cast out demons. And then he ends the whole book of Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. He says, these are the signs that will follow those who believe in my name. First, you will cast out demons. So we are called with empowerment and the things that we have in order to transform the ugliness, the uncleanness of wherever God would lead us into a place that will trans be sanctified. What we see here today in the gospel, which we read, they saw the man clean and in his right mind. A man who lived in the tombs, a man na kinatatakutan, a man that human effort could not overpower because with human effort, we will not stand a chance against the demonic forces of the world. But with God's effort, Revelations chapter 12, verse 8 says, they are not strong enough. When Michael was having war with the dragon, it says there the dragon and his forces were not strong enough. Because we have a power that is within us, each of us, as Deacon Art so beautifully said in the Gerasenes, his purpose was to transform that man into someone that will now find the dignity of life back in his life. Yung po ang panawagan natin. As we come to Sunday, we will enjoy the beauty of having our own place. But remember, all of these empowerments and things that we would see, we are the perfection of beauty. Sabi nga dun, God has shown forth, but He's also though He now wants you now because He summons the world from the rising of the sun to its setting that we can begin to be the people that He has made us to be. We are going to be the people that will go out and proclaim the kingdom of God to the unclean places, to the places that are not pleasant. Maybe even lead you out into stab establishing churches where there are no people or churches who believe in God. But with God's power and ability, things will happen. We are God's people. He always leads us to triumph. May we realize this and may we begin to see this power that wells in us. Let us put our trust in Him. And in day minus three to our diocesan meeting, let us continue to follow the steps of Jesus when He started His ministry and He began to be in prayer and allow the Spirit to move through His human humanity. God is with us always. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.